Okay, welcome back, Creatures of the Night, to the next installment of Between Canaanite 10 and myself, as we take a look back at The Undertaker and Kane, The Brothers of Destruction, The Feud, The Partnership, and Everything in Between. Uh, if you remember the last installment, we took a look back at King of the Ring 1998, the exciting double feature of Undertaker and Mankind's Hell in the Cell, and um, Kane winning his first WWF championship against Stone Cold Steve Austin in the very first First Blood match. And his first and only WWF title. There you go. I have been corrected. His first and only WWF title. Um, and as we move on to Fully Loaded 1998, we get the partnership of Undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin between the partnership of Kane and Mankind. So again, we're getting the all four participants from King of the Ring 1998 in this one match for the WWF Tag Team Championships. And uh, this is something that uh, Randy Turco and myself took a look back uh, a few months ago as part of our look back at Undertaker's Tag Team Championship victories. So it's going to be interesting to see what Kane and Night 10 brings to the table as a Kane fan looking at the fully loaded 1998 match. And as you told me, uh, I think it was last time, uh, this is your first time watching this match. Is that correct? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think I've ever seen this match. So I was actually just watching a bit of the buildup and how it became to be. So a little bit of history here. Kane and Foley entered a tag team Royal Rumble in which they won to become number one contenders for the WF tag team titles. And then they won it, I believe, a week before Fully Loaded here on what's the date on Fully Loaded here? Uh, I think it's July 23rd. Okay, they won it 10 days before then, it looks like, because it looks like it was 7-13 that they won the tag titles, I believe. Him oh. and Mankind against the Outlaws with uh, an abundance of interference from DX and the Nation oh and God. Undertaker, to which Kane pinned the Road Dog and won the WF tag team titles, and then they excitedly exclaimed that they'd be wrestling for the tag titles. Because I believe, yeah, this is 726 actually, so 13 days. Oh, okay. Because they, uh, I don't know if they were supposed to be wrestling in a tag as was, and then they put the tag titles on them and then just made it a tag title match, or? Interesting. You did mention yeah, I don't think I've ever seen this, so. And as you mentioned just briefly there with the DX and the Nation, that is a whole nother feud going on here in the background because the match just prior to this main event is Triple H versus The Rock for the Intercontinental Championship. So you have this DX Nation of Domination feud going on in the background here. You had the New Age Outlaws, the previous tag team champions, um, now losing it to Kane and Mankind, who will, as we see, lose it to Undertaker and Stone Cold. And actually Stone Cold and Undertaker's first defense comes against the Outlaws. Um, hmm. So you have all this intertwining feuds, you know, you have the Nation, DX, Undertaker, Austin, Kane. And again, all of these players may be prominent next month in SummerSlam 98 because you have Kane and Mankind who will win the titles back eventually. Uh, from they don't win the anchor. Well, whose tag champs going into summer? Kane and Mankind are going into SummerSlam. Kane and Mankind are the tag team championships going into SummerSlam because they, they, win, the um, they win it from Undertaker and Austin. And, and they, they lose the Outlaws at SummerSlam yeah. because Kane turns on Mankind, correct? That's right, because then it's found out him and Undertaker are in cahoots, as Vince McMahon has proclaimed here. Uh, he saw the future. They're in cahoots, so he's right. Um, and then you get Undertaker Austin, the main event at SummerSlam. So all these players working against each other. 
interesting this interesting times what a time to be alive right here every yeah everything is just tied to everything literally everything everything's tied to everything especially at this time um i was gonna say too like SummerSlam 98 is the rock and triple h his ladder match too for the intercontinental title yep and um and you have the china and mark henry i think you have that uh thing going on in the background as well so um, um lot, lots of players lots of things working uh you know with each other at this time because you know it is the attitude era and you know you get all the uh, all the screw all the screw jobs and and hullabaloo and everything else with you know not uh, working against each other and everything like that you know best way to put it yeah but um I'm excited to watch this again, especially with a different perspective, um, you know, a Kane fan perspective here. Uh, so are you ready? You ready to get this? I'm started? ready, yeah. I got mine up on, you always mention where you get them. Mine is up on Daily Motion, and it's actually got the promo beforehand. Awesome. Yes, Kane and I 10 is watching it on Daily Motion. He gets the promo before he gets the full match, so... Uh, if you uh, do not have Peacock or the WWE Network, Daily Motion um, is your next best bet to get this match. If you are on Peacock uh, or the WWE Network, I believe they have the same timestamp, and that is two hours, 13 minutes, 32 seconds for myself. And um, count back from three, and we'll press play. So you're ready, Canaanite 10? I am. Perfect. Three, two, one, play. We get a nice like flashback for like the closing moments of the first blood match here at King of the Ring. You know, you see Undertaker's awesome. yeah, in a sweater. Undertaker's in a in a nice black sweater. You know, it is sweater. It is sweater weather at that time. That always like kind of cracked me up but the only two people that ever hold this WF title were Kane and Austin fun fact because it's got the block logo WF look on it oh I didn't even that's yeah it does have the blue strap as well I believe the blue background not a blue strap oh look at that See, it's got oh, a red back and then a black strap but then it's got a blue background behind the WF block logo and just like the little top piece, yeah. Interesting. And right after this is when they updated it to the proper attitude error title. And you have Undertaker in street clothes attacking people. Something that was, you know, very uh, out of character at this time. Yeah. I didn't realize, I know he did it sometimes, but I didn't know he did it on Raw around this time. I thought it was more 99 he was doing that. Yeah, 99. At the end of 99, you get that transition. You can see that thing, you know, morphing out of the ministry and into the badass. But yeah. you get a little glimpse into, like, how he dresses outside the ring. Which is always cool. You get Undertaker and Austin... He wants the title shot. Hmm. And then now Vince McMahon makes them tag team partners. I did not think, I did not realize that black logo title. Good call, good, uh, good eyes there. Well, I always noticed it because any pictures of Kane with the belt, it's the block logo, right? That's right. Well, that, yeah, the one photo. There's a few, but yeah. There's one where he has his old mask on, his second mask, and then there's some with his new mask, his third mask, which he's wearing at this time now, too. Undertaker saving Kane again from Austin's fast counts. Austin's going back and forth if he can even trust the Undertaker. I always like that Kane pinned the wrists instead of folding the arms over when he tombstones somebody. Yeah. 
little something to differentiate him from Undertaker. Yeah. This must be a pretty rare pay per view to not have a WF title match. That's right. No WF title match. Especially in this era. Yeah. You have Undertaker coming to save Austin here. You got no gloves on or no elbow pads. It's so, you know, you get, you get all kinds of Undertaker attires here. Oh. Oh, stiff chair shot. Yeah, it didn't look very nice. It's pretty hard when you're over reaching over the ropes to see full Austin it's like swings it sort of so he clips you. That one was over the overhead, but that one on Foley, he just swung it sort of side to side, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still traumatic to the head, but it's not as bad as a straight shot. But are they in cahoots? That's McMahon's big question here. Are they in cahoots? Uh, McMahon here comes King. his best 1950s language. <laughs> Another simple uh, entrance uh, stage we get here. Yeah, just a square. Yeah, very reminiscent yeah. of what we've been seeing in WrestleMania, King of the Ring, everything, Unforgiven, all the pay per views we've seen, nothing spectacular. We really don't get, actually, we really don't get anything spectacular until I would say WrestleMania 15, where it has a giant logo. I think that's... I was going to say, yeah, but the year 2000, they really started different ones for everyone, it seemed. 2000, they really crank it up in 2000. Yeah. Even, like, end of 99, I remember that Survivor Series, they had, like, um, the Octagon. Oh, did they? And Armageddon, they had the tanks and everything. So, like, end right. of 99, that's when they started transitioning into bigger, better entrance stages. I like these red strap titles. They got the red back. Oh, yes. You got a cane. I do enjoy, too, that Kane is the focal point. Foley is the side piece almost in this. The side piece? Well, he, he really, Kane's music, Kane's pyro. Kane's oh, yeah, focus in them. Together. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Kane's the focus on the camera. Foley's just kind of there. And Kane's still wearing the double sleeve attire. He wears it all summer. Yeah, you get a lot of here's Undertaker. Yeah, Undertaker and Austin separate entrances. Yeah, you can't have them come out together. That'd be a nice different entrance theme here for Undertaker. Is this the guitar? It's like a it's like um yeah, it's the guitar and it's almost like a slower rift. I like it. Haven't heard this one in a while. I was going to say that the, the intro was different than the usual guitar one that everybody hears, right? Yeah. Like it's like a mix. Undertaker walking out without entrance gear. I was also going to say I was a little surprised that he wasn't coming out to the guitar riff, and he is actually, so. Such a and you know, even sitting here well, I was on TV, it's such a presence and a feeling to see an Undertaker entrance. Why, uh, why did he come 20 minutes before? What's the story there? Oh, yeah, the story was like, um, like they didn't know if he was going to show up. Oh, I see, Austin in the match. So it's like they just filmed him like coming like 20 minutes ago, just walking in the arena. They don't do that much anymore. You see that all the time, watching the guys come into the arena. Yeah. It is interesting Kane wore the double sleeve for a long time. You know, you, you, you really just don't imagine the double sleeve unless, you know, Undertaker's masquerading as him or something like that. 
I have a little bit more memories of it just because like it's around his WF title reign. So I always just I like the double sleeve a lot. So I I I'm, was... I'm a little more used to it. I'm probably being a Kane fan too, but yeah, he wore it all summer here until I believe the cell match against Foley was the last time he wore it. I love this vest. This is my favorite Austin vest. The rattlesnake on the back. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, it's starting out in the hallway there. I wanted to see the belt, see if it's still block logo or not. Undertaker still favoring the broken foot. <laughs> to be fair, it's only been two two months. No, not even a month. I think he had the broken foot even before the cell match. Oh yeah, but I mean, he certainly heard it. Oh, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't do it any favors in that match. And it's so crazy to think he would wrestle for like another four and a half, five months with it here. Yeah, and I mean, he's still wrestling now, wrestling on Raw. And... Yeah, every week with a broken foot, he doesn't really get time to get it healed until like December. As he takes time off from the Buried Alive match. It's so crazy to think about that. Fully so good. He's like just his player. little mannerisms, his movements, just how he does things. He's so good. And his noises, Rich A, Rich A. <laughs> He's always reaching with his one arm too. Feeding. I I actually I like Kane with the double sleeve. I wish that would have been his main attire. No, it, it was for the summer. <laughs> yeah, it gives more credence, you know, to like the burns and everything. Yeah, I, I like the idea of the one sleeve because it's like showing what's not burnt on him, apparently. Because that's like the gimmick is it's all right sides all burnt. So that's why his left side's exposed, right? Mm -hmm. It adds almost like a two face feel. Whoa. That's pretty nimble. Also, in that Rumble match, fun fact. Fun fact. Um, Kane went backwards over the top, like someone clotheslined him out, but he, his feet didn't hit the floor. Like he stopped himself. And I was actually kind of impressed about that. Ooh, which Rumble match? That one on Raw that I was speaking of. Kane's attire. Oh. Another reason I feel like Kane stopped wearing this is his attire would always come undone. If you look at his left shoulder, the snaps up there are always undone in all these matches. Interesting. Oh, yeah. But yeah, like um, Kane went backwards over the ropes and stopped himself before he could hit the floor. And I was like, wow, that was impressive. I didn't see that coming. My God, yeah, you can really see the, sh the things coming undone. I wonder why that yeah, is. They're they're totally undone now. All of Kane's attires, as long as they have at least one sleeve, they had snaps along his shoulder there. And that's how he got into them because they would snap up the side of the neck and down his left shoulder. Oh, interesting. I didn't, I didn't notice Because, that. you know, how else would you get into them that tight and whatever? You can't pull them over your head, right? Yeah. So you step into them and they had like kind of a piece around your crotch and then he pull up a separate pair of tights and a separate pair of trunks that put it all together there's a lot going into Kane's attire this is why I love having you on you bring this <laughs> so much knowledge of Kane's attires that I just overlook I very researched them because I want to get like a copy made eventually interesting to wear or to have in your collection to wear to wear yeah Ooh. Just for like a Halloween thing or like if we ever do like Halloween show again and stuff. Exciting. You have to send me photos. Oh, for sure. It'll be posted lots. Can't wait. 
I know we were talking earlier over that part, but I like that scene Undertaker giving the middle finger to Austin. Yeah, right, giving it back. Yeah, and like, under, and it popped Austin because I don't think Austin was, a, I don't think he was expecting something like that. Oh, did he laugh? Yeah, he laughed. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. I don't think Austin was expecting something like that. That's funny. That is. I always like that scene in this match. It's crazy to think that Foley was probably the number three guy at one point in time in the WWF next year at this time. Isn't it weird? That's so weird. And like in six months from now, not even five months, he becomes WWF champion to one of the biggest crowd reactions of all time. I know. And that's the thing I think that turns the tide. Against the wow, WWE. nice choke slam. One thing I respect about Caden too is he doesn't really adjust his stuff. You see some guys, they if they had like what he was having at the top of his attire there, they would be adjusting it and doing stuff when they're selling. Kane never adjusts anything. He just sells. Well, yeah. Like you see guys adjust their tights and their trunks sometimes when they're laying on the mat selling. Kane just leaves it. Yeah. I mean, that's good because you really don't want to take away from it because then it's like he's supposed to almost make the night like he doesn't care. Well, and, and as they shouldn't, if you're truly thinking about it, you're in a competition, a wrestling match that you're, you know, you're trying to make it not seem predetermined or anything. You, the last thing on your mind is going to be your tire. Mm -hmm. You want to win. Undertaker, I mean, Undertaker, Kane's uh, hair, especially in this match, it's, it looks very much like that Ultimate Edition head. Yeah, I think this is somewhat what they base the mask off. Yeah. Once again, I love Undertaker's buckles. He jumps into them. I know. He get, he gives the people that Irish whip them there such uh, a good reaction to it. Yeah. Yeah, they really, if you watch that media match, that's where they got the hair pull. Yeah. The hair back idea for Kane's head because when they're staring off him and Undertaker. He has his hair back just like the one Ultimate Edition head. No, running knee. Pulling his hair. Oh, Mankind is so good. I hope we get this type of Paul Bearer in a Mattel one of these days. The, the brown hair, Kane manager. Yeah, I hope we get Mankind like this as an Ultimate. And they should give him a cloth uh they should give him a black singlet and then a cloth corporation shirt and a cloth brown shirt. Yeah, I would love that. Or even if you did like a molded brown shirt kind of and then a cloth corporation shirt that you could put on. Yeah. No, oh, that cactus clothesline, jeez. Also, Kane in this era has very light colored hair, almost blonde, dirty blonde. It's fully into the announce table. Oh, geez. <laughs> I like that. Oh, man. That was a great spot. <laughs> jeez. <laughs> Double birds to the ref. Oh, 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 geez. That was a high backdrop, too. Oh, my God. I backdrop to Foley and then Undertaker gets clotheslined by Kane. Oh. But that backdrop to Foley was high. Holy crap. I love this. I love this whole era of Undertaker. That whole attire with the uh, the cross. I like this attire. Yeah. This is my <laughs> that looks so gross. This is my Undertaker. I love this era. This is the Undertaker, I think. This is like the perennial like most his uh what's it called what's magnus opus or whatever there's the running ddt oh you're speaking latin to me here i am you are you know like his most well-known like i'd say this is the most well-known undertaker i would say either this or like his I'm like 2000 true. stuff when he came back as the dead man i, I would say yeah this in the ministry that's that's like peak Undertaker. That's like 
Yeah, but like most well known to like the casual person is this Undertaker, I would say. Yeah. Like if you said, hey, do you know who the Undertaker is? This is probably what pops in their head around this time. Just like if you know mankind, it's gonna be this one, not the brown one. Yeah, it's the corporate, it's the corporate. Or Kane will be like, you know, the mask cane with the sleeve. Yeah, it's mass cane. <laughs> mankind just threw a chair in the ring. See that sideways swing? Everybody hits the chair differently. Undertaker, Austin's Undertaker. very nice about it. Undertaker's consistent. He doesn't care who you are. He'll smack you in the head. Yeah, he swings it for sure. Swings it. Unless you're Mr. Kennedy, then he really swings it. Yeah, he'll kill you if you're Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, my God. That chair shot, my God. He'll kill you if you're Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, uh, Randy Orton in the Hell in a Cell. Oh my God! He, like decapitates oh, did he Orton. Smack him there too. Oh yeah, he like decapitates Orton in the cell. I heard a story that at Mania 21, like the day before or the pre-show when they're supposed to go over the match, Orton yeah. and Undertaker, Orton didn't show up. Yeah, he was tongue over. He told that story. I remember that. That's unbelievable. That just shows how much like and he's so good. But it just shows they're like, what do you do? Like, this guy's the guy, right? Yeah, Undertaker, Cowboy Bob showed up. Everybody showed up except Orton. That's wild. Yeah. WrestleMania with the Undertaker and you don't show up and you're not fired? My God. Because Undertaker stuck up for him. He says, give him another chance. <laughs> Orton is so good, though. That's what I remember. That they had that under untold uh, that on the network. They had that Undertaker and Orton talking about that, and Orton says that he owed his career to him. Well, Orton's so good, though. Undertaker, like true. Undertaker, because he said Undertaker could have went to Vince and told him to fire him, and McMahon would have. Yeah, he's probably one of the people that he would have really listened to, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then Orton said that Undertaker told him he'll get him back, and he he did. Oh, it's just like a payback kind of. Yeah. When was the sell in this at SummerSlam? Uh no, I'm again. King of the Ring is that what you said? Armageddon, end of the year. Armageddon, I don't. Oh, right, that's right. Yeah. I was gonna say Undertaker was even really reaching out for a tag or anything. I know it gives you that. That gives you that feel like, ooh, what side is he feeling here? Yeah. He's such a good <laughs> actor. He he plays into the emotions. He wants him out of the ring. I think Undertaker pins Kane. I believe so too. Austin's getting his ass kicked here. Yeah, I'm surprised. Well, I guess they're really playing up to like, can Austin trust Undertaker? So. Yeah, they were putting the heat on the Undertaker, but now it's a bigger heat on Austin. Mm -hmm. Because you know they're eventually going to fight each other next month. You know they really wanted that thing. You know, like they wanted to make the Undertaker like the heel, so people can boo him. But then it turns out like the crowd is split in New York. Yeah, right now it's like really the drama of like, can we trust the Undertaker? Though they're building that up. Yeah. I always wondered how uncomfortable Kane must have been in those masks. Yeah, I, you know, having done that little bit of a rumble, I can't speak for Kane, obviously, but it wasn't as bad as I thought, especially wrestling his style, like a much slower style of pace. But I can't imagine the Infernal match. Like, that would suck. Oh, God. I mean, if Undertaker complained about that, then it has to be bad. Yeah, Undertaker, he said, I think, like, he felt like all the oxygen was getting sucked out around him. 
which makes sense. I can't even imagine how Kane felt. <laughs> yeah, with a mask on too. And then they do it again on Raw. <laughs> Come on, son. Yeah, and Kane's done it two more times even after that. Three that's if you count the Bray Wyatt match. MVP, that's right. Triple H, he did one on SmackDown. Yeah. And Bray Wyatt, you said? He, they did a Ring of Fire match at SummerSlam 20, no, 2012, 2013. But it wasn't in a, in, like, you didn't set the guy on fire, you just pinned him. But it was like the ring was surrounded by fire. Yeah, it still counts. Kane also throwing a rare leg drop. I want to point out, you don't see those very often from Kane. Whip into choke slam, interesting. Yeah, isn't it? Kane's really stalling everybody on these choke slam. Choke slam the Undertaker, choke slam Austin. And Kane wants Kane to give Austin that tombstone. Well, we know this won't hit because I've never seen Austin take one after his broken neck. Oh, wow. Mandible claw. Wow. Stunner. Oh. What a double down or triple down here, but like, wow. Finisher, finisher, that's the double down. Jeez. Nice. You know, you usually you get the like Kane Undertaker or whoever double clothesline or whatever, but finisher, finisher, wow. Austin doesn't take a tombstone ever since the broken neck? Nope. Oh my God. I couldn't find an instance of him taking one since the broken neck. The only one I ever saw him really take was against Undertaker before the broken neck in yeah. 97 there. Yeah, that's like the two months beforehand, yeah. Kane never gave him one, which I feel like Austin would have only trusted The Undertaker, but he never gave him one. I, or at least I couldn't find. I even posted asking about it, but nobody posted that he did. His Undertaker, he getting going for the tag. There, we go. there it is. Got it. And he still did it. Well... I think I've seen that part, that tag part. Oh, that kick. I know. Oh, Kane goes up great for this choke slam, too. Yeah, Kane, great. The great. kick to Mankind's head looked brutal. I know, didn't it? Nice choke slam to Kane. And a tombstone. Oh. This is a clean tombstone, I remember. Yeah. Is this the finish? It's the finish. He looks like he blasted him there, too. And as I remember correctly, Undertaker leaves with both tag team championships. Oh, he doesn't give one to Austin? He just takes them both? Takes them both. He gives it to Austin the next night. Interesting. Austin still got the pad on from the staff infection. No, you don't like that. Interesting, interesting. Nice. So what did you think? First time seeing the match? It was fine. Yeah? I mean, yeah, nothing uh, crazy, obviously, but... I mean, it's your typical, you know, attitude era... 
tag match, I would say. Yeah, uh, I didn't expect a lot to be honest. Mm-hmm. So do when when do they lose the tag titles? Um, they lose it before SummerSlam. So I would say sometime in August. I would uh, I would say I think it's like three weeks from then. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I would say it's like August something. If you want here, I can an on air um looking up about to see when they lose it. Going through uh the Monday Night Raw episodes here on Peacock. It's definitely before SummerSlam because they are not champions heading into the match. Okay, August 10th, they defended in a four corners tag team. I think that's it. That's the one? That's the one. I think August 10th. So there's a bunch of... Because the 27th, the next night, they defended against the Outlaws. So it's like, oh, is that Owen and The Rock? I um, It's Kane and Mankind. I think it's The Outlaws. Yeah, The Nation. Yeah. yeah, it is Owen and The Rock. It's The Nation. Yep, because on the 17th of August, it says Stone Cold vows to get his hands on The Undertaker. So I think they, they have lost it already. So August 10th, 1998. Oh, this is one of two. Did you want to do a, a, a second one here? Yeah, this one should be shorter, I would think. Oh, perfect. So you heard it here, Creatures of the Night. We are doing an on-air decision, a smother, <laughs> double feature coming your way. Not only do you get fully loaded 1998 in this episode, you get Monday Night Raw, August 10th, 1998. The Undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin defend the tag team championships in a four corner elimination style match where Mankind and Kane regain the tag team championships. And I'm only doing this because Canaanite 10 is, you know, my Kane brother of destruction. So it's only fair to see if we get a match Undertaker wins, we get to do one that Kane wins as well. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I figured a raw match would be a little shorter. That's why. <laughs> um, all right, I'm just finding. Okay, I got part one. I got two parts here. Oh, they're both on daily motion. So there's part one of two, and then two of two. So, Ooh, so you you can get daily motion again if you are doing it with daily motion. So that is good to hear. Yeah. All right, so I got D'Lo Brown standing there with the European title. That's a, that that is definitely an attitude era sentence. You got D'Lo Brown standing there with the European title. I like D'Lo Brown, especially chest protector D'Lo Brown. Chest I think protector. everybody did. Everybody likes D'Lo Brown. Everybody, everybody likes D'Lo Brown. They seem to, anyways. Okay, let's see here. I have to go through commercials. The lovely Peacock. All this dead air. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. So, let's see. Oh, I hate these commercials. It's right after a commercial break, too, because it kind of fades in. Oh, really? To D'Lo Brown standing there, yeah. D'Lo Brown? He's in the, he must be in the four corners, and not, not Owen Hart and Rock. Maybe it, it looked like Owen Hart because it looked like the guy was wearing a singlet, but maybe it was Brown. Oh, it is Owen Hart and Rock. Who is D'Lo Brown? Well, D'Lo helped Kane and Mankind win the tag titles before, so he's involved. Maybe. Okay, because he gave out. Road Dog a frog splash and then Kane Tombstone him for the win. Okay, I had the New Age Outlaws coming down the aisle. 
For those joining me here on Peacock, I am at one hour, 10 minutes, 22 seconds. Great. Just tell me when you get D'Lo Brown up on the screen and I'll, uh, he's looking, he's looking up the aisle. He's outside the ring. Let me skip a little bit here. Let me skip to D Lo Brown. Okay, I got the corporation coming in to beat up the nation. Here, okay, here's D Lo Brown in the European title. All right, perfect. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Here's the fade in from the commercial. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, here we go. I am clocked in at one hour, 12 minutes. 35 seconds. For those of you joining me on Peacock and the WWE Network, it is Monday Night Raw Season 6, Episode 32, August 10th, 1998. One hour, 12 minutes, 35 seconds. Canaanite 10 is plugged in on Daily Motion, a part one of two. And you get D'Lo Brown standing menacingly outside the ring, holding the European <laughs> Championship. As we do our infamous countdown from three to one, are you ready? Yep. Okay. And we count down three, two, one, play. Another green strap, too. Another title with a black logo. Yeah, that one had a black logo for a while, I feel like. But a green strap? Here, I didn't know it had a green strap. And now we get the entrance of Kane. My favorite. I'm a little biased, but even unbiasedly, I think the mo one of the most fitting themes to a wrestler of all time. And the Kane, creepy organ, I just love it. Kane without Mankind. Oh, no, here's Mankind. Oh, there he is, yeah. Again, Kane and Mankind entering the match together. Mankind seems a little distrusting of Kane here. Yeah, there he just said that. We are getting that conspiracy. Oh, getting conspiracy. That conspiracy. oh, he's got the bald patches still. I also like this attire because it has way more spikes on it than his one sleeve attire. Oh, great. Backstage for Kevin Kelly and and we miss Kane's pyro. That was that was a choice to cut to Kevin Kelly. That was a choice. The pinkish kind of mask. Yeah, that was a choice. Pinkish mask. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Kind of a little, the dye, I think, wearing out a little bit. Here comes the Undertaker. Uh, here we are. And in my bias. Oh, this is, this is the actual guitar theme. And in my biased opinion, the best entrance theme for any wrestler. <laughs> oh, wait, no, this is the mix up one that they have that fully loaded. Yeah. One half. Once again, the funny WWF logo behind. Yeah, can't really see it with all the smoke, but it's the different one. Yeah, a little blockier, I believe. Is that the? It's the blockier one, red. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. One half of your tag team champions. Oh, now they're in collusion, not just cahoots. Yeah. They are in. Well, that's not Vince talking. That's the king. So. Oh, okay. It's King. Okay. You got your 1980s uh, lingo from King. <laughs> As opposed to your 1950s lingo from Vince. Cahoots. Is this the blow up one? The when he brings his arms up? Oh, I hope so. That's so that's such a great effect. He did that once. Oh no. He didn't even put his arms up, did he? He doesn't need to. He just he just stares menacingly and the lights appear. <laughs> Big pop for Austin. Yeah, that's the funny WF logo for sure. Yep, your funny logo. It's got the funny logos up on the top, on the left and right of the Titan Tron too. Once again, my favorite vest, the DTA Rattlesnake vest.
it is a star stud match, as JR said. You got everybody that's everybody in the company there in this match. You got Austin, you got Undertaker, you got Kane and Mankind, you got Rock, you got Owen yeah. Hart, and you got the Outlaws. Well. Oh, no Owen Hart, you got D'Lo Brown. Oh, weird. I thought that you, yeah, did the screen cap not look like Owen? I just saw the singlet. It was. It was, it was, was Owen. Oh, it was Owen. I, I think Ken Shamrock took out Owen. Oh, that makes sense. Oh. I like when guys get jump started and they don't have time to take off their entrance attire. You like that too? So do I. Like, I always wish I can play as Undertaker in his uh, entrance attire in like a video game. Yeah. That'd be, that's, that, I always wanted that. Like, playing him as his trench coat and hat. Like he just got jumped. Oh, I love this vest so much. This is my favorite by far. Oh, slips. <laughs> He's so sick. He's, He's so, supposed to be looking down must... as that. Mankind is sick. He's... <laughs> this just cracked me up. The only thing, if you would have added Triple H to this match, you would have had everybody that's everybody. Yep. The Outlaws are pretty huge at the time. Yeah, Outlaws are big in the tag title scene. You got Rock. I hate the I hate to be rude, but you got to bump D'Lo for Triple H then, I guess, eh? Yeah, you got to bump D'Lo for H. I also like how the Rock got punched by Austin. He kind of got up, sold around, then fell out of the ropes. What a messy match. Just tag D'Lo. Oh, yeah, he doesn't trust Kane, I guess. No, no, he doesn't trust Kane. He thinks Kane's in collusion. Who just joined in the ring? Well, it's a fan. Oh, it's a fan. Yeah, he's got a sign. That's great. He's more deranged than mankind. He's sick. <laughs> they don't even say anything? No. I, know, I love that. I'm surprised. Good thing Austin wasn't up or something because he would have kicked the crap out of that fan. So let me tell you, if a fan ever got in the ring with me, I would beat the shit out of them, too. You would? Oh, absolutely. Good for you. I don't know what they're up to. First off, out of you You got to keep the illusion. I'm a wrestler, man. I will hurt you, right? Yeah. Second, I don't know what your intention is. I don't know if you have a knife. I don't know. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Oh, yeah. Absolutely not. I saw Road Dog get in there and get rid of him. Maybe that's what Undertaker was doing, too, because I didn't see Undertaker up there. Yeah, Road Dog got in the ring. He didn't land anything, I don't think. Oh, here comes Billy Gunn. I think Austin, Austin's talking to Undertaker about something. I think they may be talking about what happened. Interesting. Billy Gunn's huge, by the way, in real life. Yeah, he looks huge. Like he's like 6'5 and like 250. He's gigantic. Yeah. I, like, I, he looks He looks huge. Wow, a famouser right there. That can't that's not his finish. Wow, that was nice. He still looks the same too. Oh, he does. Yeah, a very consistent build for sure. I always like his boots. His boots are kind of loose and weird. Like they got a cover on them. Yeah. I don't think Billy Gunn aged. <laughs> no. Whatever he found, I think everybody wants some of it. <laughs> Mac Man. Mac, you hear that? Mr. Mac Man. Yeah, I think he was just accentuating to be a dink there a little bit, but yeah, Mac Man. That's what Briscoe called him, right? Mac Man. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. I think that's what Briscoe called him, Mr. Mac Man. What are they chanting? Rocky sucks? Yeah, Rocky sucks. I was <laughs> not even in the ring. Wow. I always got a kick of Mac Man. He's making an Irishman Scottish. <laughs> and in six months, The Rock becomes one of the most over people in the world. Right? <laughs> I love Rock. Yeah, The Rock is like truly the greatest talker. Like, That's the first partner-to-partner -partner tag this match, I'd like to point out. 
Interesting. Austin tagged Kane. Mankind tagged D-Law. someone else. Yeah, and Kane tagged Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn tagged Mankind. And then Mankind, I think, tagged Rock. And then Rock and then yeah, D-Law. Yeah. Yeah, Rock and D-Law. Oh, it's a boot. No, there's another one. There's another one. To be fair, like Austin and Taker don't trust each other, and Kane and Mankind don't either. So, a right arm suplex. Interesting. That is technically the wrong way. I like the little things when he covered him. He put it. He held down his wrist too. <laughs> Billy Gunn. Undertaker yeah. gets Billy Gunn off, and then Billy Gunn says, "Who did that?" And then it's Undertaker just backs away. Yeah, I'm still laughing at that Jr. thing about mankind. He's sick. <laughs> just the way he said it is just so. No, I know he's it's sick. Like right after the context of mankind running around the ring, and he almost slipped on like some water on the mat there, and then he's he's sick. Yeah, right after he falls, almost falls on his ass. Like what? Just listen, the crowd just wakes right up. Oh, partner to partner. Tag. Part, part one is over. Matt Undertaker just got a tag in, just kicked Billy Gunn. Is it Road Dogs backing away? He doesn't want none of it. Oh, you're a little ahead of me. Billy Gunn just went out of the ring. Oh, okay. Because I just had to go to part two. Oh, now Road Dog is Austin just pressed Billy on the guardrail. Austin Undertaker's getting out of the ring now. Billy Gunn's laying on the floor. Undertaker just kicked Mankind. Yeah, yeah. Mankind's attacking Undertaker. Billy Gunn sliding in the ring. Here comes the Undertaker. Here we are. Now Undertaker has Billy Gunn. I love your play-by-play action. Well, I'm just making sure you can get lined up with me. Yeah. I'm there with you. More Rocky sucks chance too, eh? Austin and Undertaker are now the legal men. Well, Billy Gunn thumbed Austin in the eye, I guess, so... But they cannot pin each other. Oh, no kidding. Well, there's some kids dressed as the headbangers. Where? Oh, yeah, they're there. That's funny. Well, the, the head, I was going to say, actually, in that tag team rumble, when the headbangers came out, they got a pretty decent reaction, too. I can't believe the headbangers are over. Oh, they're tag champs at one point. Wow. Learned something new every day. You didn't know they were tag champs? I did not. I don't know if it was 97 or 98. They were pretty over, though, for a little while. Believe it or not. I, I, I don't believe it, but I can't believe it. Wow. Like I said, that rumble, when their music started playing, they got a pop. Interesting. I have to see this rumble. Yeah, it's, it's on YouTube. Same. Undertaker with an interesting double chop to the throat. I've never really seen him do that. Yeah, you notice that? That is pulling out all kinds of different things in this match. Yeah, the important match on Raw. Yeah, right? I love these Raw matches. What a messy match this is. It Fucking is. Eight guys. Oof. Putting that together sucks. Yeah, you got eight guys, and it just feels like it feels like it was put together at the last second. Oh, well, probably back then a lot of it wasn't even called, other than just a few things. Probably a lot of it calling, getting called out there. It's like we have nothing to do, so let's just put everybody in one big pot here. Oh, you mean that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pull it, Bombs Boy. Wow. I was going to say, have you ever seen a guy win a match on a Russian leg sweep? Come on. 
we got new tag champs oh <laughs> that'd be a great finish though like a russian like sweep one two three what yeah like what just look at all the t-shirts in the audience it's either austin dx oh man i swear austin had every second shirt and then who at whatever shirts were in austin at one point were the rocker dx there's a jackass there's an austin 316 i saw stone cold university right next to the austin 316 yeah. there's another austin 316 right there yeah there's lots of hats too it makes me wonder if those are austin hats yeah there's a lot of hats yeah a lot of austin three like the black hats there yeah no oh, shake rattle and roll oh nice A lot of DX shirts. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Look at that. He just looks at the crowd and they start going at him. Rock was so much hated. I can't believe it. What's he doing? Like he's picking him up and he's not picking him up. Show no mercy. Oh, that was a close one from Austin. He ran all the way around. The Rock ran really fast on that people's elbow, too, I think. Yeah, he did. Like, this is obviously before it became the phenomenon that it is. But, no, Foley shirt has strength and stripes on it, too. Oh yeah, Fo he does have pinstripe shirt. This is like it's a different <laughs> shirt each week. This one's not even ripped, he just rolled up the sleeve straight up. Right? I wanna know when fully, like the day he started wearing that corporate attire. Because that was corporation attire. That's why he's all dressed up. Or he wanted to be a part of it or something, right? Yeah. That was the gimmick. Yeah, he won because I think that's when he started aligning with Vince. Yeah. And then he just wore it forever. <laughs> yeah, just wore it forever. When you pick apart mankind, like what an interesting like. Okay, the guy's got boots and tights and then a, a ripped up dress shirt and a tie and a mask. Like, what? What is he? Yeah, like, what is he? Well, like, before, you know, he's like a deranged, whatever, psychopath. Oh, he's calling something here. Really talking to him. This is a big spot. I know Undertaker was, I think, talking to Hebner earlier. Yeah, he definitely was. Austin was too, actually. Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of talking in that corner. They're still talking. Okay, Undertaker's in. Kane's done literally nothing. He got in and he tanked Billy Gunn right away. And that's it. Yeah. And now, now it's a free for all. The Rock is out. D -O oh, stop the deal. -O. Oh, he was going to choke slam, but he did. Yeah. Is Mr. Ass? Undertaker just booted man kind of grossly. Is it choke slam a deal? -O? Oh, here comes Kane tagged himself in. Yeah. Oh, here it so goes. The finish. This is the There's finish. D -O. And then Kane gets Undertaker, I assume. Yeah. It's over. Boy, I saw that choke slam in a lot of highlight videos back in the day. That's it. And now Austin thinks that he threw the match. Well, Undertaker's getting up right away. He yeah. just sat up right after. Yeah. 
It's interesting. Huh. One choke slam. Garbage in the ring. It's like Austin really wanted to keep the tag titles. Uh, title's a title, I guess, right? Yeah, he really wanted to keep them. I think it would have been fun to have them be tag title holders at SummerSlam. Yeah, I agree. I think it would have been a fun thing. They should have done that. They should have kept the titles on them. I think that's something Randy and I talked about in, when we did the Fully Loaded, that they really should have kept the, the titles on them as they headed into SummerSlam. See how they yeah, worked. that would have been interesting for sure. Yeah, see how they would have worked together as, you know, fighting for the WWF title while still being tag team champions. Yes, I agree. Yeah, so that... That finishes your bonus double feature here. Um, what do you think? What do you think of both matches? I mean, they're fine. Like, uh, I expect more out of the, the triple threat or the Kane and Undertaker with Austin as the ref. I expect more out of those. Mm -hmm. The breakdown? The breakdown and Unforgiven? Yes, yes. Yeah. I agree. I don't I mean tag matches, especially in this era with these kinds of guys, they aren't tag team specialists. I mean, Undertaker probably would be a lot better than and I mean Austin was at one point in time, but he's more brawly at this point in time. And then Kane yeah. and Mankind are who how they are, they're certainly no Midnight Express or you know. That is true. It's but they're of, telling the story that they need to tell. So yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of a cluster. So, <laughs> so you, you a lot of, of the stuff around this time was a cluster. To be fair, that that is true. That is true. A lot of things around this time was kind of a cluster. But you know, it was fun. It's fun to revisit things like this. Yes, I agree. It's just, you know, I, I don't remember watching the uh, the Four Corners as much as I remembered watching the Fully Loaded match. And I've definitely never seen the Four Corners one for sure. I've seen the finish to the Fully Loaded one because I swear WWE posted it on Instagram or something like that. You know? Yeah, they probably did. And I swear I've seen that one, but I definitely have never seen the Four Corners one. A lot of those early Raws, I have not seen a lot of those matches. Yeah, and it's, you know, a lot of times the matches, like, is it worth revisiting? Because a lot of times they end in DQ or count out or like... Especially for Kane, yeah. You know, screwy you finishes. Yeah, it's a screwy finish and you don't really get a satisfactory <laughs> ending. So it's like, is this worth a rewatch? Is this worth doing a watch along on? But I, oh, th I think so. I enjoyed it. I, I just like if I'm looking up Kane stuff, I'm probably looking up like 2001, 2002, like 2000, that era, because that's when Kane was like gigantic and like moving like crazy. Yeah, it's just the stuff that I really enjoy. I love watching when he's like when he's wrestling the rock for the title on like a random raw and he's like moving like crazy. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to get to things like that, like 2001 Brothers of Destruction. Oh, I'm excited for that stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited for SummerSlam 2000. That's a match I have not seen in a long time. I rewatched that recently. I like it. A lot of my friends who are also wrestlers kind of shit on it, but I like that match. I don't know. Yeah, I'm also King of the Ring 2000, The Sixth Man. Looking forward to that one, too. Right, I remember that one. I never watched that one, I don't Ooh, or if I did, it's been a long time. 
Yeah. So I'm looking for I'm looking forward to the the second arc of Undertaker and Kane. You know, the more brothers of destruction and things. Yes. Like that. Look at that. That's like my favorite era of Kane, probably like 2000 to 2001. There, that's my favorite Kane stuff. Yeah, because have- I think I have a lot of bias because that's like when I really remember watching. Like I started watching, like I said, mid ninety nine. Yep. Yep. But then that Kane, like, and I, I just have like lots of fondness towards it now because he's so jacked and so huge and moving so well at that time and doing really good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so we we had a ton of our different arcs in storylines to get through. We got you still got this main arc, the ninety eight to ninety nine. You know the the first uh, meeting between them, and then you get into the collusion and like when Undertaker leaves. Then you get the yep. arc between the badass and Kane, and then the Brothers of Destruction. Then you get the third yep. arc when Undertaker returns, and you got the Dead Man and Unmasked Kane. Yeah, uh, which leads us to like that. That third arc takes us to when Undertaker and Kane, you know, the final one, the Buried Alive, two thousand ten. Yeah. Final arc is like what we had the last couple of years, like two thousand fifteen on. Yeah. So looking forward to it. Looking forward to all these different types of arcs and storylines and things they twist and turns with, between the Brothers of Destruction. It'll be good. It is. I, I mm-hmm. can't wait for a lot of these matches because a lot of these matches I have not rewatched in a long time, uh, especially yeah. especially the 2010 rivalry. I have. I don't think I ever rewatched that stuff. Yeah, I never really did either. And I, honestly, some of those matches I probably never seen. Like I don't think I've ever seen. I think I watched the Cell match, but their other one I don't think I ever watched. Yeah. So that's gonna like be- a lot of the pay-per-view matches I never watched in in the first place. Yeah, I don't think I have as well. So it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting to revisit this stuff. And I can't. I'm pretty sure I looked up the Paul Bear because Paul Bear was back, so that's why I looked it up. But okay. that being said, I probably watched it shortly after it happened. So it's been ten plus years since I watched it. Yeah, of course. And so, well, I I could ask for a better person to join me on this journey. And I just can't yeah. wait. Can't it's wait for fun. That. And it has been fun so far. Uh, like, what have we done? Like, four matches already, right? So that many, uh, yeah. Yeah, so- well, we got Mania and then the Inferno. Yeah, I guess so. No, we've done six now. This is the yeah, six one, six total. So, uh, this is the two King for- of the Ring, Mania, Inferno, and then these two here tonight. Yeah. And we're not even done yet, folks. We're not even done through 98. Not even close. Not even close. You still got a whole chunk left, and I'm here for it. Yes, sir. Yes. So um, thank you again for joining me. Can't wait to continue this journey. And until next time, Creatures of the Night, join us here at Same Taker Time, Same Taker Channel. And as always, keep on rolling, baby. Until next time, Kane and I 10, it's always fun. Yes, sir. Thank you. Of course.